in honor of the season, winter lullaby. As smoke wove whitely upward through the trees and blew through gentle lips with tender sips of moonlight tasted quickly from the glass that comes on nights of sparkling stars so far from warmth that mars the cleansing slice of night, I heard the sacred words of forest song and sang along. is called in the mail and um, you know I think that we've all felt at times that we want to show the people that are dear to us things that are hard for us to show every day and that's what this song tries to touch <laughs> Your finger at the sea 
your finger at the seal with vulnerability and need dear you open me I've written in a letter with vulnerability and need for you to know for us to grow for you to want to read This one is called Rare Trouble, and it touches upon when you think you're stumbling into something that may be no good for you, but you go ahead and dive in anyway. And then you wonder, you know, will this stick around, or is it just going to be a flash in a pan? Either way, you have fun with it. Fighting trouble questions, flame or lightning. Fear and its loss of gravity, fighting trouble questions, flame or lightning. We have with us Jerry Morris, the instrumentalist of the Idlewilds, and Crystal Charisse, their former lead singer, now a poet, who helped work and create the pieces that you saw, which originally started off as Crystal's poems. So how did you go about the process of turning the poems into a musical piece? Well, first I read the poems. And pick the ones. So you needed some inspiration to, to feel it? Yeah, and I had to pick the ones that were more suited to putting into song format. Okay, so what makes a poem more suited to song as opposed to another one? Um, it has to fit a certain cadence and a rhythm. Okay. And a rhyminess. And so some choppy spoken word, not necessarily gonna work yeah, with the blues guitar. Real wordy <laughs> is, is not easy to put to music. The okay. less words, the easier it is. <laughs> the less <laughs> words, the better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I picked the ones that we did and... Uh, now, I noticed you didn't use music or anything written down. Do you just make it up as you go along, sort of following the words? Yeah, or? I don't read or write music. I just, I play what feels good, it sounds cool. It's nice. That's what I do. Nice. <laughs> Whenever I asked Jerry to help me with this little project, um, the reason why I targeted him, as opposed to you know a lot of my other friends that play music and things, is because he's extremely good at improvisation and, and making things up on the fly. So I thought that, that would fit well with um, poetry. And I asked him to help me with the project, and I gave him a copy of the book, and he came back at me with a few of the poems that stuck out at, at that he thought would work well. And he said, well, how do they sound in your head? What, what do you hmm. think these should sound like? What voice you know, do you? So is that how you decided what genres? Like I noticed you had some funk, and then you went bluesy. 
the poems just sort of tell you what kind of music they want to be? Pretty much, yeah. You just kind of feel it. So now, why am I not hearing the Idlewilds everywhere I go? What's, what's up with that? <laughs> I'm just well, saying. first of all, it's the mighty Idlewilds. Oh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> the mighty Idlewilds. But uh, it's just a bunch of us that get together and play, just for fun, you know. And where are you guys based out of? Where do you guys tend to rehearse? In East York. <laughs> East York, yeah. Ooh. So now, you, I do hear rumors about maybe recording some studio work? Uh, we talk about making a CD every now and then, but uh, pretty much we just get together and jam. That's all it is. How long have you guys been together? Um, well, the, some of us have been get together for quite a few years. Others have joined. It depends who shows up, you know, whoever shows up to play, and we just play. And how long have you been playing? Because you are wicked on off, that guitar. Off, off and on for 40 years. Wow. There were periods of time where I had to sell my guitars to pay bills, and <laughs> then I didn't play for a while, you know, and then I'd pick it up again, and just, just off and on, 40 years. Wow. Your county amazes <laughs> me every day. Now, these books, these poems came from your new book, By Polarity. Yes. Which, that was also a collaboration, correct? Correct. And you co-authored, so did, how did that work? Did you actually write some of the poems? Did you guys write the poems together? How did you put that together? Well, Lori and I uh, worked with Bipolarity. We, we both are very opposite of each other, and so we thought that if we put together a collection of our poems that were on similar subject matter, but very opposite in their styles, and what, it would represent us well. And you know, we, it was a hand-picking process, trying to go through and see what subjects matched up and what poems were good foils. And so you actually chose poems that complemented each other's. And, and I know in, some, in the book, some of the poems even have the same or similar titles. So you found poems that match. Now, did you do that on purpose? Did you write them that way? No, actually. That's the really unusual thing, is that they weren't written that way. Uh, Lori and I have been friends for decades. and. You know, whenever we would get together and talk poetry or discuss poetry and pull something new out, the odds of us writing about the same subject matter were always astonishingly similar. Um, it, it just is very strange how that happened. And so whenever we collaborated on the book, it seemed like a natural extension of that same sort of phenomenon that was occurring. Well, then I think we should bring Laurie Rosengrant, co-author of Bipolarity, on the stage, and I think we should hear a little bit more about this book. Jerry, you are awesome. <laughs> Your guitar playing is incredible. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for coming on the show. Thank you. So now we are here with the actual both authors of Bipolarity. So we have Crystal Sharice, and then we also have Laurie Rosengrant. So how long is it that you guys have been friends? S seventh grade. Yeah, since seventh, seventh grade. grade. Yeah. And you can still deal with each other. Yeah. Absolutely. So now, how long did it take you to put together the poems in this book? Uh, pretty much, I'd say, a lot of this poetry's been most of my life, so I'd say like 15 years. So it's like yeah. a retrospective. You yeah. actually pulled work from the whole course of your life. Yes. Your life story. This is basically the background, so any books past this will be all brand new, fresh material from here. So this is kind of like culmination of our past and where we've been. So everything from mm -hmm. here will be where we're going. So now, one of my favorite things about this book is the fact that it's not just poetry, it's actually art. Now, you guys did the art that's in this book as well. Correct. That is correct. Which is gorgeous, by the way, full color, glossy pages, yes. beautiful paintings. And in fact, the paintings that are on our wall and decorating our stage right now are all you guys' work. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, so if you had to pick. Painting or poetry? Which is more your favorite art form to express yourself in? Poetry. Poetry. Wow. Yeah. So why poetry over painting? I think it's easier to manipulate the word than it is the paintbrush, at least for me, and come out with a product at the end that I'm happy with, that I think has an expression of what I was trying to convey. So what made you decide to put the artwork in the book? Why not just do a straight poetry book? 
Well, I think that the artwork uh, complements a lot of the poetry that is in the book, and it also shows a facet of my personality and Lori's personality that maybe doesn't come through at a 360 degree view, just through word. Now, I know a lot of the poems in the book match up with your paintings, which are more realistic. Well, your stuff is like all over the place. You have like wild, abstract yeah. colors. Did they actually connect to the poetry in the same way for you? Um, mine are actually more of an emotional response to some of my favorite music. And, but it is also represent representation of I am just really all over the place. So I do like that about my painting. So you have music inspired paintings yes. and poetry. Correct. Is there anything that you don't do? Um, my mom always says I sing horribly, but I think I'm okay. <laughs> so we're not, we can't look for any poetry set to music for right. you. Maybe more like spoken or something, you know, like you do, like not as much singing, but maybe a spoken thing or thing. Uh, So now where can we find copies of Bipolarity? Um, well, you can find copies of Bipolarity at any of the live readings and performances that we do, either here in York or in Harrisburg, Hanover, Baltimore area. Uh, we have those advertised on our Facebook page, Bipolarity. So people should go to Facebook.com mm -hmm. backslash Bipolarity CCLMR, That's shouldn't right. they? Yes, absolutely that they should. That sounds like an awesome idea, and they can get your book there. And yes. also Smashwords, correct? Correct. It's an online virtual version is available on Smashwords. So people go to Smashwords.com, and they can search Bipolarity or put your names in, and they can find and download your book. Absolutely. Right. Well, I know personally, as much as I adored hearing some of those poems set to music, I'd love to hear some of your actual poetry. So would you guys mind stepping to the stage and reading for us? Of course not. That would be great. <laughs> awesome. Bipolarity. Fire would love to swim, and land would love to fly. The Arctic, a helium glow. The desert, panging to cry. Canyons beg for closure the valley and the tide, the sky to ground, the sun to rest, water yearning to be steadfast, the moon to shine of its own volition, the mountaintop a plain condition, wind to feel its own resistance, lightning strikes a new persistence, earthquakes tremor the discordant mind, the tornado within the soul's eye. Another egg suicide. Another egg suicide, cracked wide open on the treaded linoleum as I stared down at its muddled composition. Egg yolk, shell, white, mingling with breadcrumbs and dust it scorns at my profanities. Where are the king's horses? Where are the king's men? Could anyone put you together again? Rolling along, teetering with demise, splat! I could have turned my head. Would my hands have followed, cradling your fragileness? Always scrambled, never sunny side up, except in moments of awakened slumber. Vex soul, breathe, another egg suicide. Masterpiece. Look at this picture. In gold foil impressed on text, leading to enlightenment. Ponder what it meant. To the artist when the creation of full color and depth diminished to a monochrome gilding. Then, in your dark hands, my hundred selves burnt away. Versions of me most cherished, reduced to ruin, cinder and ash. You, the self-important, self-impotent, self-celebrating creator, tried to cover everything of me that didn't display your vision of a masterpiece. Before this defacement, I was a work of art. Now, a lifetime later, I recreate, restore, resemble the phoenix. The flinted soul sparks, graffiti burnt away, yields a new blank canvas. Reawakened, I still don't know what the gold foil emblem meant to the artist, but I know what a full color life means to me. Memories storm. Softly singing spring rains. Memories move me forward. Liquid light spills into night, splashes across the sky. Whispers wander without course, 
never knowing refuge. Silent sins come back again, thundering through the soul. Softly singing spring rains, bringing back the past. Missed my mind, so all's left behind, fleeting with the wind. Tuck me in. Moonlight drips off the windowsill onto the carpet. It dampens don'ts and can'ts drop from the lips. Don't go. I can't stay. Don't go yet. I can't stay long. The dry words stay and go, become slippery and hard to hold, sliding out from the mouth without sticking or stopping. I have to go. Stay a little. I have to go soon. Stay a little longer. Wading through wet words, kneel beside my bed, float into the deep, preserve. This is closeness to heaven. Hold me. Kiss me. Hold me close. Kiss me goodbye. The moonlight drips. Tuck me in. Our next treat is our web clip for the week. Something a little bit different and what needs to be your Friday night plan sometime really soon. The York Swing Dance Club actually has free lessons and then an awesome open dance party every Friday night. So in a little bit of footage from their West Market Street studio, here's some hot spot swing dance info from the York County Swing Dance Club. director for the York Swing Dance Club and I live in Dover Township and the York Swing Dance Club has been here in York since about 2002. We are currently in a space in front of Cobblestone's restaurant but as of the end of the summer we hope to be moved into a space here at 324 West Market Street. Uh, we'll have a bigger dance floor and big windows and lots of people can look in and see us having all the fun we like to have in our dance. The biggest thing about swing dancing is it's totally addicting. I was one of those people, the first time I went dancing, first night, I couldn't wait till the next Friday. And since then, it's just been this kind of fun roller coaster of going to different events and going around the country with different people, and it's just been a blast. We have people from all age groups, from kids uh, 16 to 18 in our performance group, and then we have people my age and in their 60s and even 70s who are swing dancing. And some of the best dancers in the country, the original dancers, are still dancing in their 80s and 90s. And it's a blast to go out and dance with them, too, if you ever get the opportunity. But we have a big dance every Friday night. It's 18 and up right now. We start with a beginner East Coast swing dance lesson at 8 o'clock from 8 to 9. And then from 9 till midnight or later, if we're having a great time, we have open dancing. And it's five bucks. Can't beat it with a stick. Best entertainment in Europe. We're trying something a little different this week. One of my favorite artists, I thought this guy is just too big to be stuck in the studio. So since he's a huge activist of the city, he's actually the poet laureate of the York City school system. I decided to take to the streets in front of his high school, in front of the parks where he frequents, and with some of his favorite friends nearby. I'd love for you to enjoy the video stylings of spoken word artist, poet, and community activist, Conscious. What's up, York, Pennsylvania? It's your boy Conscious, AKA Uncle Prop. I'm out here in YC about to do my thing. You know, on the poetry tip, you know how I do the poetry, the spoken word. You know, I've been doing my thing since I was eight years old, so I've been in the game for a long time. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself, let you know, you know, I'm from out here, YC. You know, where we all, we do it real big. We're going to do our thing. We're going to talk about some stuff, some good, some bad, some ups, some downs, some spiritual life, the kids, you know, anything, a little bit of anything. Y'all know how I do. So let me bring it to y'all attention, bring some light to some things, you know, and just, you know, let's, let y'all fill up on, you know, what's good, you know what I mean? So check it out. 
I'm mad inside, just because. We live in a city that has no love. Every time we open the paper, it's another young teenage brother that's going to jail, being killed or hurt, another funeral at another church. Over senseless violence and foolish pride, and York City is only five miles wide. And we claim sides of towns and blocks. How many kids have to die before this stops? If a man with a gun takes another life, one dead, one in jail, so really we lose twice. Instead of rising to the top, we're going under. The deceased are getting younger. And sometimes it seems so crazy to see a little girl with a little baby, and she don't even know how to survive. See, age in the black community between the ages of 15 and 25. See, I'm so mad I feel like crying. Truth and reality is our kids are dying. I want to reach you the best way I know how to, let you know your life has value. Because we lack education and that ain't cool because they'll build another jail before they build another school. It's time for us to use our brains. Doesn't this hurt so bad it makes you want to change? The juveniles are being tried as adults. You can't do the same thing and accept different results. Because if you go to jail, yeah, your people will miss you, but after a while they forget you because they ain't there with you. So instead of being thugged out, let's flood this city and pour some love out. I'm not asking anybody to be perfect, but 20 years for $20, is it really worth it? So today I challenge you to do some things and make the people proud of you. Because it's time for a York revolution. Not just our baseball team, but a solution. For those that fall next in line, we at the bottom of the hill, but we still got to climb. God knows there's a better way. Because tomorrow's just an extension of yesterday. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Is it that person you really want to be? If not, make a change because we all go through. This is just spoken word. But who am I talking to? Is it you? Holla. Hey man, and this, this piece right here is for the kids. I've come to the realization that we live in a nation that doesn't allow us to vent our frustration without consequences or deliberations because we're known as Generation X. The ones who were lost. But if you look at that X carefully, it's really a crooked cross. See, that's where the war is because there's more kids that want to trust in our Lord kids, but they just don't know the truth. See, God told me to P-R-A-Y, please reach another youth. See, what we don't see is our kids are being raised by TV and rap music, then we question their behavior. We need to let them know if their favorite rapper dies, he won't rise again three days later. Let them know on the days when they're doing too much. Let them know it's not cute to hear a young lady cuss. Let them know life is real and you can't always be playing because you can't get no job talking like, you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying? Let them know they can make it in a house without their dad. Let them know being a Christian is a lifestyle, not a fad. Let them know not to be a follower, it's okay if you fall back. Let them know when you move out on your own, you'll find out it ain't all that. Let them know you did it first, so when they talk, you should listen. Let them know white tees and jeans on the streets that fits the description. Let them know to save their money instead of buying things they can't afford. Let them know your testimony and how you won't be here if it wasn't for the Lord. God said these things to me so I can share it with all of you. Forgive us, Father, for we know about what we do. Amen. I love you, York City. So I see I'm out here chilling, you know, doing my spoken word thing. But I just, you know, like to share a little bit of my testimony with the people that are watching. You know what I mean? I came a long way. What you're seeing now is, is a different person, a different version of, you know what I mean, who I am. You know what I mean? When I was a young guy, you know, I kind of ran the streets and, you know, did stuff I wasn't supposed to do. You know, I got into some things I wasn't supposed to get into. You know what I mean? But, you know, at, at later on down the line, you know, I, I found God. You know what I mean? And I got myself together. You know what I mean? I went in the military. You know what I mean? I start doing things that, you know, mean positive. I start seeing that, you know, somebody that poured into my life, it was time for me to take the time to pour into someone else's life. And, you know, and, you know, sometimes God gives you a blessing to be a blessing. And he gave me the blessings of spoken word and poetry. And, you know, I mean, I, I take the time to give praise and God, you know, give praise to God as much as I can. If you ever look at me on my Facebook page, you see that I do, a, uh, I post a prayer every morning, you know, it's let us pray and whatever, you know, God puts on my heart to say, you know, sometimes, you know, you can be an inspiration to somebody that doesn't pray or doesn't know how to pray. So, you know, but like I said, I've came a long way and, and this is what it is. You know, God has blessed me and he's brought me and he keeps on keeping me. So this piece is called, I'm only human. What's the true meaning of life? Love, pain, sacrifice, like, even as I walk with Christ, I'm human. So I don't do everything right. Now I suppose some look down their nose with fake smiles and hellos as if I don't know, so. Yes, I confess we all have our mess, cause the test is in the flesh. That doesn't mean you should love me any less. I suggest you pray for me to be blessed, yet you'll judge me. Instead you should not be, let God know you love me. I keep my head up because heaven's above me. Remember, God don't like ugly, so hug me. I'm only human. God said you can't love him and hate your brother. And no one's sin is greater than another. See, the hard part to live in Christ is if I get off course slightly, it's highly unlikely to be taken lightly. But who may man or woman the Almighty? Because I can tell you very nice and politely, at a point in time, you was probably just like me. My sight sees that nobody asked about my past, but you'll put me on blast because you remember me from a high school class. Quickly sell mine and save yours for last. Remember, don't throw stones if your house is glass. 
See, I'm not afraid for none of y'all to know what I was doing a couple years ago. Yeah, I was wild and straight out of control, but now good is God, I just took out one. Oh, I'm only human. If I never ever made a mistake, then how can I relate? I don't want to be good, I want to be great, not fake. See, reality is the hardest medicine to take. It's time for us to listen, because what we've been missing is even if you've been to prison, does not mean you're not a Christian. Because people can sit right up in a church and still don't know the word. See, I smoked weed and I sold weed and I asked God to hold me, console me, because even in the crowd of people, I was still lonely. I got babies and different ladies, and sometimes it's crazy, you know, if and buts or babies, but lately through God, they show me respect. See, I'm more than last name in a child support check. My kids is miracles, not mistakes, so I have no regrets. So when I look back over my life, it makes me talk to God before I sleep at night. And just because people quote scripture don't mean they get the big picture. See, I'm coming with all I have to thee. It's not about them, God, it's you and me. I surrender all down on my knees because you're the only one. Would any of us give up our only son? I'm only human. Now, I'm done. Amen and amen. What I love best about Conscious isn't his amazing spoken word, actually. It's the fact that he's such a tireless community activist. This guy has worked for the York City school system for years. He's been at York High. He still coaches Lady Bearcat basketball. He's been at Hennepin. He's a mentor, and that's one of his most important roles. In fact, aside from seeing his poetry, I wanted to have you check out this footage of him hosting the Trey and Boo Slam Dunk Contest. It's an incredible community event that he takes part in every year that does incredible things for bringing the youth of York City together. We're going to have him back on with some of the kids he mentors in the next couple of months. But for now, check out this footage and see what he does on the street in action with the community. And don't forget to stay tuned afterwards because we have more on the street footage. We out here at the first annual Trey and Boo Classic 2011. We about to get it popping with the slam dunk contest. The atmosphere is crazy. It's about to go down. I'm going to do live on the spot interviews and all that. Yo, get ready. About to get popping. Breathe TV. Slam dunk contest, baby. Yeah. Yo, what's up? First round of the dunk contest. It's high flying. It's going crazy out here. Yo, how you feeling about the dunk contest right now? Crazy right now, man. I ain't think Trey was gonna land that, man. I ain't think he was gonna land it. Yo, yo, how you feeling, man? How you feeling? What you think? Who you think's looking good out here right now? Feeling good. I wish I could see my man Parker out here though. He bluffing on us. Who feeling good? He said. Trey looking nasty right now. I can dig it. I can dig it. Breathe, TV. We about to get back at it. Dunk contest. Trey and Boo Classic. Yeah, we out here. Yo, what up? We out here, still going down, still don't contest, it's going live out here. Yo, how you feeling about the don't contest right now, man? Yeah, I'm chilling, man. It's all right right now, though. It's looking real nice right now, though. Right, any any favorite dunks, favorite dunker? How's it looking for you as far as, you know, the competition? Boy right there, I don't know his name right here, but yeah, he he might take this home right here. Him, he gonna take this home. By the man between the legs, that's what's yeah, up. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm talking about. Home. You already know, we out here, we got the fans, it's going, it's going crazy yeah, out here. Yeah, yeah. Trey and Boo Classic, Slam Don't Contest Show. Why well, I see his pop. No doubt. Rest in peace, Boo Banks, Trey Mechanic, Bees. You already know. Hello. Yo, what up? Don't contest. Breathe TV. Here with my man Trey Bowman. Right now, he's the people's choice and the crowd favorite. He's doing his thing, wowing the crowd. Yo, how you feeling right now, man? Feeling good, man. I'm about to bring some stuff out my bag for y'all. I can dig. I can just another round. You gonna do something, something special for the people? We on. We need one of those, one of those wow, one of those crazy moments. You got that for us, brother? Of course, I got y'all, man. I can dig. Too much talking. I can dig it. Breathe TV. Trey Bowman. Yo, he's up there, baby.
Yo, Reeve TV. Yo, we out here. First annual don't contest. Trey Bowman just shut it down. Yo, he shut it down. He just did the don't of the year out here in YC. For the first time, slam contest. Trey and Boot Classic. Reeve TV. All the way turned up. We love YC. We out here doing it, baby. Ballin'. We're back out on the streets of York City. This time to check out one of my personal favorite musicians from the entire county. His name is Soji. He's a Nigerian-born, American-adored soul singer, songwriter, performer. He even writes a little bit of poetry. But today, he's going to be enjoying this beautiful, outdoor, crisp, clear weather with me and singing some of his heartfelt, personally written songs. So, on the street for Culture in Maine, enjoy Soji. I don't know if I have a choice, right? Sometimes uh, songs just come to me and um, I feel like I should play it, you know? I feel like um, I should write more and I should think think about what, you know, whatever idea ha that has come to me is saying and, um, and it feels good to be able to um, create, you know, create something out of seemingly nothing, right? Just sometimes an idea pops in your head and, you know, and then there's a, finished product and, you know something you can share with people and uh, people can sort of relate to what I love about music as a form of art is that it's um, you know like many forms of art I can be um, I can sort of do whatever I want with it I can you know I can just make things up on the spot and you know, I can still relay the same message. I don't know if I am able to play the same song um, the same way every time. And 
so you know it, to be able to be that creative with with music um, you know feels good apprehension in your eyes you're holding back and I don't know why did you hear I'm too damn sensitive and I boldly wear my heart on my sleeve what is stopping you from loving me you know I just can't As long as I can remember, um, I've always had these periods of time where I'll be, you know, you know, when I was a kid, I'd be like doing homework or uh, drawing or something, and uh, a song idea will come into my head. And truly, that's sort of how it's been. Where you know, I'm driving in my car now, and uh, I'm, you know, watching a movie or I'm about to fall asleep, and song ideas just come into your head, and you know, it's sort of betraying who you are to not follow what those ideas are so I sort of you know just keep writing those songs that come to my mind I really really enjoy writing about love anyone who comes to my shows knows that if um, I'm doing a cover of an original or whatever it's usually gonna be about love or about the loss of love or about the want of love or something to do with love um, sometimes I'm pushed to write in about um, people sort of suffering or um, some kind of injustice in our society uh, you know something relevant like that but um, usually it's about love and romantic love and relationships and things like that um, I spend a lot of time thinking about that I think um, that uh, that's for from a you know just a personal perspective, it helps me to be a better person if I can be um, if I can be loving towards someone and uh, be able to accept the love of someone else. I wanna be like that. I wanna be. Like that, I wanna be like that. I wanna be, I wanna, I wanna stand for something I believe in. Holding on to my convictions and making love to someone. That I never want to run from To be honest from the very start And not pretend I'm different from the others And lie my way into you And end up being your lover So I'm just like the 
of the guys you met before Imagination. Your presence still fills me. Disaster waiting to happen. Hey, yeah. If I were you, I wouldn't have given me a chance. See, girl, no. If I were you, I wouldn't have given me not even. I just recorded an album called The Singles and I got a lot of help from some amazing artists in York and you know well it's one thing to think that you know you're writing these songs and people can relate to them but when someone or someone's adds you know a flair to it that really kind of brings out the meaning of that song and is also you know beautiful in, in how we hear it um, it means a lot so um, I'd like to thank all the artists in York who are involved in that project um, you can hear uh, you can hear some of the songs on facebook.com slash soji music or on iTunes you can buy them on iTunes or at one of my shows uh, my concert schedule is on my uh, Facebook band page Heaven forbid that you are as advertised that you're in to reflect your outside Heaven forbid that you are as advertised that you're in to reflect your outside Clouded. I'm so excited with fear in mind I try, can find it no more No more, no more to these wrongs, these wrongs These wrongs have been riding in
But I also like to thank culture in Maine for being a, a real powerful source of um, getting art out in the community and letting people know about it and uh, you know sharing the joys of, of uh, York with, uh, with, within York and outside of York. Thank you for joining me for another incredible episode of The Talent of York County on Culture in Maine. And also a huge thanks to Jeff Kuhn, who runs Bad Dog Music up on North George Street Extended in Manchester. He was also one of the songwriters that helped put together some of the music that Crystal and Jerry did today. So even though he wasn't able to be here with us, make sure you check out Bad Dog Music. Now please enjoy some musical stylings from Jerry Morris and have an amazing rest of your week. Thanks again.